filming. <laughs> what? Huh? You're getting in the way of me filming. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm a landscape architect and environmentalist, and I'm here with my junior gardener, Hi. another Michael, and we're going to help you find some great shade-loving plants for your South Florida garden. So, you ready to dig in? Yeah. Let's, Let's go. go. In an effort to help you find the shade plant you're looking for, we created three categories. Starting with large shade plants that get somewhere between four and eight feet tall. Then we'll move on into the medium category of shade plants that grow somewhere between two and four feet tall. And the final category, which will be small ground covers, and they'll be in the range of between one and two feet tall. Capping off this video is a written list of all the plants in the large, medium, and small categories, which you could use as a plant guide when you go looking for plants for your garden. So here we have a cool shade-loving alocasia, the Yucatan. Aren't the leaves kind of cool, Michael? Yes, they are. What do you like about this one? I like the yellow. Almost looks fake, right? Yeah. Right, right. California alocasia, great, great shade loving plant. Michael, put your hand up against it, show how big the leaves are. Whoa. Whoa. And look at this variegated alocasia. Beautiful modeling. Oh. Look at that specimen, right? This would be great under a large shade tree. And if you have a lot of room in your yard in the shade, you could consider the giant taro or the giant alocasia here. But know that this can easily get up to 12 to 14 feet tall. So you gotta have a lot of room for it. There are also some wonderful dwarf varieties of alocasia. And I'll go more into that in the next category of medium size shade plants. One of my faves is is a Laqualla grandis. I love this. You may have seen that video that we did at Native Tree Nursery. Look at these Laqualla grandis. Aren't they spectacular? Wow. It's not a native, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful palm. And we have some arecas. Wow, cat palms, which are great for the shade. Don't get as tall as Arika's, but they're great for the shade. But the lady palm, oh, lover, super, super cool. This and the Laqualla grandis and the Laqualla spinosa are great, great plants to have uh, in the shade in your garden. They do not grow fast, but they create this wonderful texture. And we'll have. Um, a similar look to the to the uh, uh, Laqualla spinosa, uh, but their leaves, you know, they have this little fan-shaped look to them. But the spinosa doesn't get as bushy, uh, with with these having many, 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 many uh, stalks coming out, stems come out of the ground. They grow in these clusters. They're great accents. Do well in a container as well. And I would be totally remiss if I didn't mention the thatch palm, the Florida thatch palm, which I love it's a florida native obviously florida thatch palm and it, it does great in the shade and it does really good in a container you all highly drought tolerant there's also silver palm and some others and i'll put that again it like i mentioned in the summary at the end here's another florida native the saw palmetto it comes in a silver and a green variety it's very slow growing and it maxes out at around seven, eight feet tall at maturity. And here you can see some Chamaderia palms and some White Bird of Paradise. They do great in the shade. Oh my God, look at these giant cordyline. Wow, black magic. Yeah, man, these are massive, massive. They're pretty big. Yeah. And we have some more cordyline over here. These can handle the shade. There's a whole bunch of different varieties they've been making. This is cordyline as well. This is the Thai uh, Bolero, 
really nice. Kind of cool, huh? Yeah. Red sister Red tie sister. plant. Ooh, can you I go behind there over there, Michael? See if you can stand up next to one just so people can see how tall it is. Looked a little bit more. Whoa! That's kid height, right? Yeah, it's kid height. Isn't that kind of cool? Yeah, it's cool. And what's behind you? That's a ginger. Yeah. Here's some of the ginger, red, and the pink. Beautiful. This will be about their mature size, just a little over six feet. It's very well in South Florida gardens in partial shade. Over here we have the variegated ginger. This does great in the shade, beautiful flowers. You've seen our video at Fairchild, where this one was in flower. Put a PIP image in there so you can see the video. It'll grow between four and five feet tall by about four feet wide. You see these over here, these are begonias. These are great for your uh, garden as well in the shade. Right. You know, the giant elephant ears behind them, great pairing. Here we have some Dracaena. These are really cool, tough, it's bush type, but you can see how they can get quite tall. Most Dracaenas will get like that, but these can handle deep shade, give you a lot of cool texture. You could consider the, the Warnecii, which is the white variegated one. This one over here, I'll show you. And I'll give you a little more color. Let's see, where was it? Carmen's cool too because it's got that yellow edge I like that. Where's the, there's the Warnecki eye. See how that is? It's cool. It's got that white edge. But the sander is, is cool too. You know, a little more dusty gray white. Song of India, which I love this plant. Super tough. Slow growing though. Super cool. This is the age old. Seen a mass cane that we use back in the 90s so much in interiors. We see these major trunks, these things they can go up to you know eight feet tall with some of these plants. You know, really, really uh, the plant du jour back then. Here are the cane plants I'm talking about, and then we have over here this nice little lightly variegated one, the Lisa Cane Dracaena. We have the lemon lime, one of my faves. One of my faves, it gets this beautiful, beautiful yellow edge to the leaves, the green center. And then the Dracaena limelight, super bright yellow. Very similar to the moonlight philodendron in color, right? This is the Papaka I was mentioning that would go really well to contrast to either this Dracaena to Dracaena or to do this uh, compact of this dark, dark uh, green dragon tree next to the moonlight philodendron. See something? Oh, got the Lady Di Heliconia here. Beautiful shade, beautiful flower. And here we have the Lobster Claw Heliconia. Super exotic looking. It will get taller than the Lady Di, easily to eight feet. And copper leaves here. I mean, there's just so many of them that are great for your South Florida garden. They can do well in sun or partial shade. I mean, just amazing amount of variegation and the variety in the leaves. We have the iris pedico here, the Tahiti, Moria. Java white. Over here is the Inferno. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Next to it over here, look at this guy. The Chicago brick. Copper leaf. Beautiful. 
Here is the Tibicina. It gets to about six feet tall. Beautiful purple flowers. Does well in partial shade. Other great plants for, for the shade is the Australian tree fern. Ah, oh, beautiful. Look at that unfurling. Isn't that beautiful? They get up to about 10 feet tall. All right, let's move on to the next category. Look at these beautiful Congo philodendron. And then we have Silver Bay, Aglaonema. Super tough. These are great interior interior uh, plants as well. Uh, not the not the Congo as much, um, but in your these both would do well in shade, but being in shade, that's kind of ideal for a home condition, growing conditions for a lot of folks. And Silver Bay would do great. It gets a little big though, you can see. Ooh, here's our Deffenbachia camouflage. So pretty. More sterling Deffenbachia. We have this as a house plant. We'll do okay in your yard. Oh, and then the beautiful moonlight. Moonlight philodendron. Isn't that great? It's great in the shade. Do well, like pairing up with, with actually the tricolor here, marginata. See the colors with that? And a real dark plant like uh, the uh, Warnecii compacta or even the, the Congo version of the philodendron. Beautiful, beautiful plants. This is the pine cone ginger. We had it growing in our Miami Shores home. It does really well in the shade and it gives you these beautiful red flowers all the time. You have the Tri-Star. They're, they're okay. They sometimes will do well for a, for a period of time and then kind of crap out on you. But, you know, very striking color. Oh, you like the water? Cool you off? <laughs> do you like this one over here, Michael? Marianne Deffenbach, yeah. You have to be careful because there's some toxicity with the, the dumb canes in general. Yeah, you, mean they have yeah, you don't want to get the sap on you or ingest the sap. Michael, look at the bee. Look at the bee. There's still live bees. Yep, see him? He was getting some pollen. Whoa, he's coming at me saying, stop it. We're going to go to another nursery. They didn't have all the plants we, we uh, wanted to show you. So, yeah. Tell me, what's up? Remember that time we bought a bunch of plants and I was just surrounded in them? Yeah. They said, help me. Yeah, yeah, that was when we did your butterfly garden. Yeah, that was funny. Help. <laughs> Please, help me. <laughs> we'll get you there soon enough. We, we did get quite a lot of plants. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's go to another nursery. Wait, what? Wait, what? Hello, Monarch. So, Michael, this is a cool shade house, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is the Swiss cheese plant. Cheese? Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, Monsteria deliciosa. Wow. Really cool. Yeah, the Monstera deliciosa. How does it feel? It feels just like a normal leaf. Yeah? What color would you say? A medium green? Yeah, I'd say it's a medium green. Yeah. I'd say it's a medium green. Yeah. How about this one over here? This one's a really cool plant. This is the Burley Marks philodendron. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah? It feels just like, just feels just thin. Yeah? Like so Looks thin. glossy green from up here, right? Wow. Yeah, cool. This is what the new growth of Kunti will look like. This beautiful light green. And then it will turn. It'll turn this dark green here. So beautiful. Ooh la la. It's also the host plant for the endangered Atala butterfly. Isn't this butterfly beautiful? 
This is Scheffelera trinette. I've done a few videos on this plant. Super tough, super drought tolerant, and it can handle full sun, part sun, or even deep shade. It grows to about three feet or so high in the shade. Crotons are great. You can do these in, in shade. This is the Mame, but there's a whole range of different types and colorful varieties for you to choose from. Here are the snake plant varieties. They're very shade tolerant, but it's probably best to keep them in a container uh, and use them as like an accent plant. You don't typically want to put them in the ground because they can tend to get a little bit invasive. And here we have the Alocasia poly. This and the other dwarf Alocasias do great in the shade and they give you this really tropical vibe. And other good shade loving plants are what? What are these? Do you know the name of these? These are caladiums. Come in a hole. Yeah, they're great. Actually, really good for the summer, but they come, they bounce back. Yeah, they have a whole bunch of various colors, as you can see white, red. This one's called cherry tart. Isn't that cool? Look at this. I didn't even know about this one. This one's called sizzle. Cool. They just keep coming up with new, newer and newer varieties, which is so cool. I really like, I really like the white because in the, in deep shade in your yard these these will pop this will really really pop out in your landscape all right what's up pink panther that's awesome pink panther caladium super cool right yeah they're all shade loving all the caladiums and they can handle a little bit of sun as well they have some iris here some walking iris great shade plant Great, beautiful, beautiful flower. Here we have the baby Swiss cheese. Really cute with all those little cutouts. And next to it is a new arrival on the market, the tangerine philodendron. Look at that, super Ooh cute. La la. Some maiden hair fern does great in the shade. You may have seen that at Fairchild when I did that walking video. Maiden hair fern, wonderful. And they have some bird nests. This is great as a as a uh, uh, ground cover in your yard. It's a little lighter uh, green color. And they have the sword fern, also another excellent plant for a shady area in your garden. And the macho fern gets much taller than the others. You know, usually three, three, four feet. Won't grow as tall in the shade, but this will actually do well in the sun. Macho fern does well in the sun. Asparagus fern, one of the toughest. Holly fern, super tough. There's artillery fern, super tough. Super tough plant. Just break off a stem and stick it in the ground. And it'll grow a new plant. Just break off a piece like that, put it in the ground, it'll grow. What are you doing? Ready? Let's go look at more plants. And they call it wart fern because behind here, sorry, I got my camera gear in the way. You can see all the spores. That's where it gets its name, warts, wart fern. Isn't that cool looking? And if I go over here, you can see wart fern again, but in a smaller, smaller container. You saw the larger ones over there, but this is typically how you would buy it in a one gallon. And the cool thing about wart fern, it has these little rabbit foot little trailers this is where it'll grow you can actually cut this right here and put it in the ground and it will form a new plant very easy to propagate and look what they got going on here they have like a a wart fern variety a little silvery one Ooh la la Ooh, fancy i haven't used this so don't know how to recommend it but i'll probably try it out and let you all know later but yeah you can see I love, I love the nursery industry. You guys are trying out so many new things, hybridizing. Oh, thank you all. You guys are wonderful. As is the ZZ plant. You gotta be careful not to get too much water on them if you put them in your yard um, because they can rot out. They like, they like to be a little dried, dried out, but you know, very striking form, texture to their leaves. Really, really cool plant. Super tough, great. Great as an interior plant is too. We have this one and this easy raven in our home. That's great as a house plant. Over 
over here we have some ethereums. These are great for shady location in your yard. Just got to make sure you don't uh, watch for spider mites. Um, they do tend to to attack this this plant, but it has a host of different colors of, available to it. This is actually the flower, and these are just the modified leaves to the to the flower. We have white, pink, red, mostly red here. And you actually, believe it or not, you can use pothos as a ground cover in the shade here in South Florida. You know, they're super tough. Um, they will climb and climb up trees. And I think I did, I did a video on the plant as a house plant. There's many different varieties. There's the, there's just the golden pothos here. This here is marble queen. This one's a very robust grower like the, like this one, the golden. Uh, but they, they do form great ground covers here in South Florida, actually. Here we are coming upon some yellow ground orchids. Those are great. They can do well in sun or partial shade. You know, partial shade, they'll, they'll flower a little bit less. But um, they can actually grow in full sun. They, the leaf tips may get a little burned, but when you get partial shade, uh, they're going to do really, really well. It's the variegated peperomia. Used as a ground cover in the shade. Pretty tough, no real pests. You also have just the uh, plain green version available. Peperomia obtusifolia, but this is the variegated. Variegata. Some more ginger. I don't recommend the ivies. They tend, they tend to get a lot of pests. Spider mites will attack them. So as cool as they are, I think they're more for northern Florida than down here in uh, South Florida. All these, Michael. What do you think these are? Those are bromeliads. Now with Zika, we didn't plant a lot of these because obviously water will hold in these cups here of the plant, which is the way the plant normally is evolved to hold onto water. A mosquito will lay larvae in there, so we stopped selling. Well, a lot of places stopped selling a few years back, but we got Zika under control, but which is great. And if you um, can, you know, deal with an occasional mosquito, these are great, great choices for your, for your garden in the shade. You just have to be aware of the water and, and uh, any larva that gets in there. You can put some mosquito dunks and pellets in, in there, which won't harm the plant and control the mosquitoes that way. But I mean, look at them all. They're just so cool. Look at all the different, I mean, doesn't that look like you're, your, your uh, plushie, the, the tiger, the stripes, right? Isn't that cool? Let's go see some more plants. Here's some begonias. These are good for your, for a shady area in your, in your garden. You may have seen, we've done a video here on the Sinbad. And here's a beautiful Rex. So pretty. And over here, this is cool too. This is really cool plant. This is a spider plant. This is the mandarin. We've done uh, a video of this good house plant, but it can also be a nice accent plant in your garden, in the shade. And the classic spider plant, the green and variegated, also does pretty well as a ground cover in the shade. And the Chrysandra. Uh -huh. Real tough plant, can do well in it. This actually can do well in a container as well. There's Liriope, which is good for, good for the shade or sun. You can see, look at some of the flowers are coming out. How pretty. Look at those flowers. These are coleus. They're very good. They, they, they vary in, and they're, they're known for their leaves, their striking leaf color. We, can, we actually have the big red here in our home as a house plant, but they can, they've, they've cultivated so many different varieties. So this one's known for just, just shockingly bright colored leaves and not so much their flowers but those are pretty tough plants for your south florida garden it's just beautiful oh my goodness and what better plant to close out this list than the orchid phalaenopsis shown here do extremely well in shade especially the white but you can use dendrobiums and cats and other varieties and now we're going to switch over to the written plant summary with all of these plants written out for you 
plus a few others for your consideration. And then little Michael and I will come back to say our closing remarks. So we hope you had a good time. Did you have a good time? Yes. And make sure, if you like our content, make sure to like and subscribe. Turn on the bell notification. Shameless plug, but we got to do it. Until next time, bye. Bye. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> if you found value in this video, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. We post weekly. Thanks.